What's good, my people? Welcome into Buckets Action Network's Daily NBA Betting Podcast. We're in the workshop. Jay Money <laughs> is in the building. I am your host, Sean Little. We are recording this live from our home, Tommy John Studio. Salute all our people over at Tommy John. Go pick up the draws, man. They sent us a couple <laughs> pairs. They are elite, sensational. <laughs> Let's get into the workshop, though. You know how we get down. We're going to give you the play. We're going to give you the cap. We're going to get you guys out of here. But first, we're going to do a little chop-up session. Talk about LeBron James and LeBron James Jr. Jay Money, first off, how you doing? Hold, let me take my chains out. I, I forgot who I was dealing with, man. Let me, <laughs> let, me, let me pull my little joints out, too, you know what I'm saying? So I can get a little sparkle on And if you only listen to this on audio, this is why you have to go subscribe to the Action Network YouTube page. Me and Jay got the chains out. We're ready to make some money on this buckets. But first, before we get to the picks, and we'll get there shortly, Jay Money, where are you at with LeBron and LeBron James Jr., Bronny James, getting to share the court together as a father-son tandem? Because a lot of people are chatting. Look, man, this is nepotism at its finest. LeBron pulled whatever strings he needed necessary to play with his son. And other people are like, hey, man, regardless of how he got there, it was a special moment. It was cool to see Bronny play with his dad, check in, do what they had to do. Where are you at with the whole situation? Well, I'm kind of on a fence. Um, Just my opinion. I've been very vocal about this. Um, I don't hate on anybody, but just talking strictly basketball, like, come on, Bronny should have stayed in college at least another couple of years. Um, Definitely shouldn't be guaranteed a roster spot in the NBA. Like, that's where the fine line is. We get who's your dad, but let's take the name off the jersey. It's something I like to do in cap and take the names off the front of the jersey. Let's take the names off the back of the jersey. Is this guy an NBA player right now? Um, I'm pretty sure the popular vote would say that he's not, and um, I just feel like that they're kind of rushing thing this is kind of like for more for entertainment like we do these days more for entertainment and less about actual basketball so um just the story itself great story uh obviously i have a son as well i would love to like if i was in the league i'd love to have him even make the league let alone be on my my own team so um a monumental moment for the nba but um i definitely think it's just once again lebron won all the attention won all the headlines and stuff to be like uh, be about him uh it's putting a lot more pressure on his son than it should be um and that's the look that's a little unfair to Bronny. Obviously, he's going to be under a microscope as well. You see what I'm saying? So um, it's a great story, but let's be real. My guy didn't even start at USC. Like, what are we, you know what I'm saying? You got to, <laughs> if that uh, type of player, you, you need to go, you need to stay in college maybe all four years. You see what I'm saying? But um, yeah, Bronny, yeah, they got that out the way that they played together in the game. He scored zero points. Now it's time for uh, to go to the G League, Bronny. Yeah, go get some actual reps. Go get some time on floor. I'm split as well because it's not like we don't see what's happening. LeBron James has got the leverage to get his son on his team and into the league and pay him an absorbent amount of money for being the 55th pick, money that a 55th pick has never and will never see again. He's going to pull those strings and make it happen. So both things can be true. Is it nepotism? Is it LeBron doing everything that needs to be done for his son to be on the Lakers end to play? Yes. And can it also be cool that LeBron James is the first ever NBA player to play basketball with his son on the same team? Yes, it is. Both can be right. So, yeah, man. Well, look, I'm not an idiot. You're not going to be – you're not going to pull the wool over my eyes and tell me that <laughs> Bronny James just magically – was drafted to the same team as his dad and deserved to play when he wasn't dominant at any stop throughout his basketball career. Not in high school, not in college, and definitely not getting any type of minutes on the Los Angeles Lakers. So we'll leave that there. We had to get a couple two cents in. I don't want to derail the show, but a lot of the the big-name guys not starting the year. Zion's out. Embiid is out. PG is out. Late scratches, we we know, if you listen to this pod, you know where Jay Money stands on injuries and them being reported. Some of this stuff is always tough because Paul George, for example, clearly got his leg rolled up on and we saw it. A lot of these other injuries, all this undisclosed and treatment and, and uh, 
different teams laying out stuff about work and load management, that's when it starts to get really sticky. So as we always say, keep an eye on the injury report every single night, every hour when it's released before you start putting in your NBA plays. All right, Jay Money, let's get to the paper. Jay Money, give me your best bet for the Thursday NBA slate, October 24th. Give me the Spurs, plus seven and a half. Big Wemby on the road in Dallas. I like it. We'll cap it. We'll break it all down. I am going to go with a total. I'm going to go over 226 and a half, minus 110. Timberwolves playing their second game of the year for the home opener against the Kings. Like the beam. We'll talk about it. J Money is money. Chris Paul in the fold. Lots of lobs loading. In San Antonio, they are in Dallas to take on the Mavs, a team I'm very high on coming into this year. Luka looks like he's in shape. Why are you looking at the Spurs here in the points? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty high on the Mavs as well. It'd be interesting to see if they can duplicate that run um, that they did last year as well. I'll, I'll, I'll end up getting all the way to the NBA Finals and know it, man. So uh, really proud of the Mavs. You could argue that this is probably the best team that Luka's ever had. They've added some dogs over there. Obviously, with them adding – so they still have Derek Lively, still have um, – uh, still got PJ, still have PJ Washington as well. And then they added Najee Marshall, who's a dog over there from the Pelicans. Then they got guys like Quinn Grimes as well, a really great 3 and D guy. Uh, not really worried about the Clay Thompson um, pickup as well. A lot of people are hyped about it. I mean, I think Clay is. Uh, there's a reason why the Warriors didn't want to re-sign him. They they know, you know what I mean? But uh, Clay is just a little bit past his years, in my opinion. But um, I don't like this spot for the Mavs in the first game of the season. They are at the house. Um, first off, they do have a little bit bigger game coming up right after that's the Phoenix Suns. That's one I could really see them getting up for. But as this one, you have the Spurs on there. Let's start with this. Luka didn't play a single preseason game. I don't care if he's coming in a much better shape, if he's skinnier, all that. Sometimes you need some reps. Like, this is like a preseason game for Luca, like I, I mean, I play basketball. You can practice all you want until you have that real live game action. There's nothing you can simulate that. Uh, some nothing you can do to simulate that in practice. I'm expecting the Luca to be a little bit short winded uh, in this particular spot. And also, if you look at the spot as well, this is a quadruple revenge spot for the Spurs. Um, they lost all four matchups versus the Mavs last year. This is the big bro- their big brother, so to speak. They've actually lost nine of the last ten matchups versus the Dallas Mavs. Um, and like I said, I mean, the Spurs, they actually closed the season with some momentum. Eight and two against the spread in their last ten games to close the um, close the season. And Owen, they got Chris Paul over there. Usually when Chris Paul goes to a team, for whatever reason, he just adds at least another five, ten wins um, to their previous um, – win total so i'm expecting a very um i'm expecting somewhat of a bounce back year for the spurs they won't be tanking this year they'll actually be trying and um i like them plus the points in this particular spot and mainly because like i said i mean they the new guys for the mavs they hadn't got used to playing with luca yet first game let's land seven and a half uh, give me the spurs here uh plus the seven and a half i think there is a good reason why this has went down from plus eight to seven and a half so give me the spurs in this one yeah, no doubt. They add Harrison Barnes, you know, a little, little veteran leadership there with Chris Paul. Talk to me about that Chris Paul edition. How big do you think that'll be for Wemby and just that whole situation of actual a real trigger man pulling the strings in San Antonio? Well, every team, it's almost like the NFL. You need a court. Your the quarterback is probably the most important um, position on the team, and in basketball, starting point guard that is the absolute most important position on the team. Especially when you have a guy down there like Wimby, who just he just needs someone directing traffic for him. This the Chris Paul and Wimby pick and roll is going to feed families. I'm telling you this, like with like you already can't jump <laughs> with Wimby. Chris Paul throwing that thing right. I mean, what are you gonna do? You gonna try, you gonna have to um try to tackle Wimby. That's the only way that you're going to be able to stop that pick and roll. So just uh, even though Chris Paul is older, he can't really stay healthy, but just him bringing his smartness, it's like he's another coach out there. Everything that I'm reading is Popovich doesn't have to say a whole lot because he has a guy in Chris Paul that's already out there on the floor and coaching the guy. So uh, Popovich can really just kind of sit back, relax, add another veteran and uh, Harrison Barnes as well. Now you can bring Trey Jones off the bench here. Um, I just, I really, I really feel like this is going to be a much better season for the Spurs in this one. Uh, pretty much everybody's going to be in in this one, other than Devin Vassell as well, man. So um, I, I think the Spurs uh, are really primed to keep this game close after getting their butts, butts kicked by the Mavs for so long. Yeah, no doubt. And Chris Paul is flat out there. 
to make Wemby's life easier. And I think that's exactly what he's going to do. It's going to show early uh, in the season here. Let's hope the Spurs keep it tight, maybe even potentially win outright down in Dallas. Let's see how Luka looks, because that is a good point laid out by Jay. No matter what you do, playing basketball is a different type of shape. Let's see how he looks in the first couple frames there versus San Antonio. All right. Let's go to Sacramento, man. I'm going to take the over, 226 and a half, minus 110. Timberwolves in town. I I also pinpointed this game because it's it was a game, Jay Money, that we've already seen one of the teams play. And I don't know how many times I'm going to say this, but you don't know what it's like to play with Julius Randle until you play with Julius Randle, and they are learning that very quickly I, it was it was actually odd jay money i i felt like watching Ju last night was he looked like he was sad just like he wasn't engaged on what was going on at all and we also we always talk about the off the off the court stuff like last year we talked a bunch about dame dealing with his divorce and how you know it takes some time to get settled julius is a guy that wears his emotions on his sleeve and it looked like I'm still I, I still haven't realized like damn I'm really on the team. I really play for the Minnesota Timberwolves. I'm gonna I gotta get acclimated here quickly. He just looked out of sorts and overall the team looked out of sorts. But that said, let's talk about the cap and the over. I think this is a spot that the Timberwolves are already thinking about just trying to bounce back. They were awful against the Lakers. Allowed 72 points in the paint, lost the fast break. 17 points to seven to LA. The Lakers only had seven turnovers and they were five of 30 from deep. I'm going to tell you right now, the Kings will turn the ball over way more. The pace will be picked up. Minnesota last year, a game created 14 turnovers per. That was ninth in the NBA. They're going to be able to turn the Kings over. It's going to open up the game, loosen up some things. And this game will be a lot more wide open than the game we just saw in Los Angeles. And I can guarantee you as well, they'll shoot, better than five of 30 from the floor with all the, sh- or from deep with all the shooters they have over there. Now, one thing here, Jay, is that if Minnesota, who desperately misses slow-mo Kyle Anderson's defense, that, that his ability on that side as well, but if they're going to be able to get beat up inside, they gave up 72 points in the paint to the Lakers, that is only going to help the Kings be able to put up easier looks at the rim and then spread the floor for their shooters, Murray, the rest of them, and and get better looks for Herter and the rest of the guys, right? I think this game, if Minnesota is going to be a little out of sorts and trying to get everything figured out defensively and offensively, this game is just going to be up and down and a little more open. couple trends for y'all to nibble on as well. Four of the five matchups last year by, between the Kings and the Timberwolves went over, by the way, way over for most of them. Last five games, 244 in OT, that would be an over. The one under, 208. Then it's 235, 234, and 272 between these two teams. So Randall's not getting stops. They miss slow-mo. Gobert is trying to figure out how he's going to anchor the middle now. With, with with different partners on the squad. So I think this game is just a lot more wide open. Last couple trends. This is from Matt Moore, actually. So if you're leaning Timberwolves in this spot, this trend supports that. Teams that lost the first game on the road and are on the road again are 32-19 and 19 ATS since 2009. And this is one I pulled. As home favorites, the Kings last year, 21-14-1 and one to the over. That is 60%. Jay Money, any thoughts on – give me some thoughts on what, what you saw from the Timberwolves in game one and the over 226 and a half in this spot. Yeah, I mean, we knew the offense was going to be stagnant. Like you said, I mean, Julius Randle is in a – people got to remember, man, these guys are professional basketball players, but they're also human beings. They're not robots. Like, they have feelings. They have emotions. Um, Randle has to move all of his stuff over there. Like, I mean, he has kids as well. You got to find the kids, a new school, all this type of stuff. So there's a lot of outside things that you have to get ready when you're um, when you're getting traded from a team, man. So um, his wife was even talking about it as well on her social media and stuff. So it's a lot of stuff that you have to go 
through. You're going through a total. I mean, imagine going from New York to anywhere else. It's gonna be there's gonna be a change there. You see what I'm saying? So, um, I mean, we knew that there. I was on the Lakers. I knew that the, it was gonna take a little bit of time for these guys to get uh, used to playing with each other. And I just I, I don't really think that Julius Randle's a winning basketball player. I definitely don't think he's a max contract type of guy. Uh, maybe coming off the bench for for a team that's trying to compete for a championship or something like that. If he connects well with them, but it's all about his attitude. You just trying to you worry if he um him and Anthony Edwards, guys like that, Rudy Gobert, who's a different type of guy. You worry if these guys are gonna jail um personally, personality wise, because a lot of this stuff matters, man. So um I mean we saw the Kings go, I think, over four, over five in the preseason. It yeah, didn't look like five. they really wanted to show any yeah, they, they really didn't want to show anything or show their offense, but, I mean, this is still basketball. I wouldn't want to be coming in the first game of the season after going 0-5 in the preseason. Um, I don't think that they will dominate – that the Wolves will get dominated in the paint like they did um, versus the Lakers, just obviously because the Kings just don't have as much size. Um, they did get DeRozan over there. Still got De'Aaron Fox. He's trying to play for a max contract. He still got Sabonis, the double-double or triple-double king over there, but um, – I'd be interested to see if the Wolves can bounce back. I'm not sure if I'm going to hop on them in this bounce back spot for the simple fact that obviously they're still working out the kinks. Chris Finch still has to worry about, uh, still had to figure out the lineups as well. And all of these reasons why I faded them in their first game. So they are the better team, but you could argue with the Kings only adding to Rosen over there. Um, they, they, somewhat have more continuity um they like i said he did play in i believe three of the preseason games so even though they didn't win they have been playing with each other a little bit more the rose is a lot more of a likable type of guy as well more of a system type of guy whereas randall he's kind of like hard he's his own system you know what i mean you just gotta you have to get used <laughs> to julius Randle over there yeah, but no, no. um the wolves are the better team here i can tell you that for sure wolves are the better team yeah and overall i don't see Sacramento's going to shoot a lot better than the Lakers, and they're still going to get what they got to do in the paint. This game is just going to be a lot more wide open. I'll take over 226 and a half. All right, Jay, this year we're going to give out – look, man, we're not big parlay players, not parlay players at all, matter of fact. But the people love parlays, and the people love buckets, and the people love the Jay Money and Sean Little tandem. So we're going to give the people – a little parlay at the end of every episode. We're usually just going to combine the plays that we already give out and then maybe add a little, add maybe one more leg and get it get it up to a, a funner number. This is what we're going with. Spurs plus seven and a half, minus 110. You just heard Jay Money. Kings, Timberwolves over 226 and a half. You just heard me. And then I'm going to add the Thunder plus two and a half on the road in Denver. Everybody's high on the Thunder. They're supposed to come out and be competitive. That game is is tough. But if the Thunder are who a lot of people are saying they are and where they're projected in a lot of people's power rankings, then it might you might not get too many spots throughout the regular season where they're catching almost a full almost a full possession of three. So I'll add the Thunder at plus two and a half. That comes out to plus six oh five if you're interested in that. All right, to recap from the Tommy John home studio. J Money is Money Spurs plus seven and a half minus 110. I am on the Kings and the Timberwolves over 226 and a half minus 110. Go, man, go subscribe to my dog's YouTube page. J Money is Money. Man is talking NBA daily. Go subscribe to the Action Network YouTube page. Subscribe to Buckets. Tell a homie to tell a friend about Buckets. Me and Jay are going to be on every Tuesday and Thursday throughout the NBA season. Just us two. Shoot us any, shoot us any notes, questions, anything y'all want to hear off the top of the episode. We'll chat before we get into the picks. 4J Money is Money. I am your host, Sean Little. Subscribe to Buckets and... Let's get some buckets to start this NBA season.